Also, I want to acknowledge a really special guy in my life. His name is Charlie Fitzpatrick. He has been in charge of the K-12 program at ESRI and has changed thousands and thousands of kids' lives by working with teachers to bring geoprocessing, GIS, geography into schools. So, Charlie, could you come out here? Oh, you're already here. I'm here. And introduce a special teacher and a special kid this year. You bet. Thanks, Jack. Around the world, GIS is growing. There are programs building in many countries. And here in the States, there are now thousands of schools, hundreds of clubs, dozens of districts, and even a score of states with licenses in place or pending. But there's a darker picture. With funding and support slashed, and education standards shifting, and teachers with salaries being tied to test scores despite directives to promote critical thinking, and families facing unusual hardship. This has been a very tough year for educators. I want you to think about an educator that has made a difference in your life. This is a person who knew about many things. And most important, he or she knew how to help you build knowledge and discover key lessons about the world and about yourself. This was not your easiest teacher, but someone who knew how to feed your mind and spirit with knowledge and direction, but also challenge and independence. Teachers today must do much more with much less. And from the highest office in the land on down, they are being asked to promote STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. There are many STEM teachers and even STEM-focused schools. But surprisingly, most of those have not heard of GIS, nor yet learned how geographic thinking solves problems, nor how to build mapping and analyzing data into their activities. They need a hand from someone who knows how to do it, someone in their community like you. Can you make a difference all by yourself? Absolutely. We know it because Teachers have learned how to do this, and they have built this into their classes. This year's Highlight School did it. Clark Magnet School in the Los Angeles area serves many underprivileged kids, but they provide a lot of opportunity to them and expect a lot of them. One teacher learned GIS several years ago and built a home for it. As you catch their story, think about where you might be able to find a STEM school or a STEM teacher in your neighborhood, in your community, and help them discover GIS. From Clark Magnet High School in La Crescenta, California, please welcome science teacher Dominique evans bai and rising senior Yepram Chavdarian. Thank you, Charlie. I found that students want to make a difference. They give their best when they have the opportunity to do something positive for their community and the environment. A project has to be relevant to hold their interest. It's just common sense. There are a number of competitions out there that challenge students to apply the science they may not think is so relevant <clears throat> to original projects that do make a difference and GIS is a perfect bridge between the scientific principles taught in core classes and relevant problems students can solve. One student created a video out of materials from the last few years that showcases a little about our school and how we use GIS. I did the voiceover for the video, but other than that, it's entirely student created. Enjoy. Clark Magnet High School is located in La Crescenta, California. Clark is a science and technology magnet within the Glendale Unified School District. 
Basic skills are reinforced and built upon throughout the high school experience, culminating in a senior project required for graduation. Clark has developed a robust career technical education program through a partnership with the Los Angeles County Regional Occupation Program. All students take ROP courses at Clark. These courses help them consider various career options and provide experience for an edge in a competitive job market. One unique program developed by teacher Dominique Evans Bai synthesizes STEM education into one GIS class, Marine Science Research. In her class, students learn the biology and ecology of the Southern California ecosystem as they learn to use ArcGIS. They learn CAD by creating models of remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, used in marine research. They build their ROV designs using PVC pipe and bilge pump motors. Using ArcGIS, students investigate how variables such as sea surface temperature or marine protected areas affect the abundance and distribution of marine life. Students examine contamination and bioaccumulation in the marine environment by collecting samples and performing chemical analysis. Some students take the research further and enter their projects in competitions, such as the Lexus Eco Challenge. This past year, one group of 11th, 12th grade students who call themselves the Eco Savers won every category of the Lexus Eco Challenge by entering GIS projects. Students map the organic and inorganic contamination found in California spiny lobster. Arsenic turned out to be the biggest problem we have here, with some lobster having up to 43 parts per million in their tissues. In the Air Climate Challenge, students tied in climate change affecting the frequency and severity of storms. They use HAZIS, software from FEMA which integrates with ArcGIS, to do a risk analysis of flooding in the Glendale Unified School District. They found that all the schools within a thousand feet of flood control channels were elementary and preschools. A number of children in Los Angeles have been swept away in flood control channels. The Santa Monica Seafood Company donated lobster tails from East Canada, South Africa, Nicaragua, and West Australia. The marine science students again analyzed tissue samples at Ermes, and the EcoSavers team mapped the results. They won the grand prize in the final challenge and were awarded over $70,000 in student scholarships and grants to their school. State Senator Carol Liu spoke at the awards assembly, presented the team with awards of recognition for their achievements. The students didn't stop there. They went on to document how contaminants travel from the land to the sea in the LA County Department of Public Works Streets to Sea Challenge. Here, the students use HAZIS to generate stream networks through the study area and illustrate the direction water flows through the land, to the storm drains, and out to sea. Now, students are partnering with CalFlora to document invasive plants, both at the Channel Islands and in our local foothills. Students have hiked trails at Catalina and Santa Cruz Islands and recorded invasive plants found there. One student used a Trimble GPS and mountain bike to map the trails in the foothills. Student hikers will retrace the paths and document local invasives to compare with those found at the islands. We use marine science to hook the students' interest in STEM-related fields and teach them GIS, knowing those skills will translate to any college major or career. As you saw, we did several big projects through the year. The most analytical of these was our flood risk project. Yeprim Chavdarian has been in my class for two years and has been an integral part of all these projects. I'd like to have him demonstrate for you some of the work he did with Hazus. Thank you. Thank you. As a second year GIS student, I've had the chance to use GIS to address current environmental issues by documenting and analyzing data in my mapping projects. By using FEMA's Hazus software and ArcGIS, my team was able to identify potential safety hazards in our community. Southern California in general gets very little rainfall. When it does rain hard, our flood control channels are designed to take water quickly away. We wanted to assess the flood risk to schools in the Glendale Unified School District, so use HAZIS to do a level two analysis. Here you can see the LA Basin as well as the Channel Islands. Our school is located in northern Los Angeles, shown by the green pin on the map. We used HAZIS to define our study area, which was our district.
We also use Hazus to generate a DEM and then develop a stream network. We chose to focus on the main channel that flows through our district. In the past, this area saw flooding until the channel was cemented in as a part of local flood control. We did a risk analysis using HASIS showing the area that can pose a threat during a 500-year flood event. We adjusted the parameters to account for a cement-lined flood channel. The flood control does what it was designed to do. An analysis shows there's little damage or loss due to flooding in this area. We adjusted the parameters to account for a cement line flood channel. The problem was that children are often drawn to watch swift moving water. There were not any schools that were in flood prone areas, but a number of schools look near the flood zone, so we'll do a selection by location. So here I'm going to target the schools layer. I'm going to apply a search distance of 1,000 feet. OK, so we've selected schools within 1,000 feet of flood-prone areas. Mm, didn't work. Most of the schools found within 1,000 feet are elementary or middle schools. We use this information to begin a swift water awareness campaign aimed toward children and parents. The geoprocessing took a lot of time to run, so my partners would start the analysis, we would run over lunch, and the other two members in the next class would finish the analysis. The challenge was we had to finish our project in one day because the school computers have a deep freeze program that erases all of our data when the computers are shut down at the end of the day. <laughs> we, ran one we ran one analysis overnight, and the CAD class the next day lost our whole project. We also use what we learned about HAZES to inform the public safety diver community on how a risk analysis was, with HAZES could help document the need for funding in order to properly equip and train a water rescue team to respond to flood emergencies. Next year, we want to continue working with HAZES to do a risk analysis and loss estimation for earthquakes in our community. Yebram is changing to a regional display, which joins our HAZUS analysis to the Tales of Tales project, where students assess contamination in lobster. <laughs> the streams that run through our district go down the LA River straight out to the sea, bringing with them any contaminants that may be on land. This map shows the level of arsenic in tissues of California spiny lobster off our coast and the Channel Islands. Projects similar to the ones my students did doing, using GIS could be done in your community. That's where you come in. You can help them learn, share your experience, mentor them. Your kids can be doing this too. Thank you. Thanks. That's great. Uh, okay. shall we? Oh. Congratulations. Thanks. Great. He's ready to take your job. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Oh, and thank you for being a star. Don't you think he deserves one more round of applause? <laughs> My God. All right. Thank you.